So welcome to Test of Study Hall. Tonight we're going to be going over SAT writing meaning questions. Um, I'm the real Tom Rose. I'm one of the co-founders of Testive. I'm a professional teacher and also a professional writer. And without further ado, let's jump right into meaning. Um, first of all, meaning afflicts, or errors in meaning afflict 29% of all writing questions. So it's a very common um, error type. It's right up there with verb tense in terms of how common it is. Um, second, it does not involve grammar errors at all. So that makes this a very unique um, error type in the writing section because all the rest of the error types deal with grammar. How can you get better? The short of it is the following things. One, you get better by vetting correctly used conjunctions. Two, you get better by eliminating redundancies. And three, you can get better by using your judgment to understand the author's true meaning. So first of all, meaning is not grammar. Um, meaning is going to revolve around um, your interpretation of the author's true intent. So an, a meaning error is going to have um, a confusion built around intent. It is not going to be an error built around incorrect grammar or syntax. Um, all of the other error types that we have been going over and all the other error types that matter to you on the SAT writing section revolve around the correct usage of American English grammar, which makes this error type completely different from all the others. Here are a couple of things that you can do um, to spot meaning errors. So for example, beware correctly used conjugation. So here's one. Um, Hector drove the nails and he used a hammer. What is wrong with that? I'm not sure it's particularly wordy. I'm not sure. Uh, I wouldn't say, well, I'm not sure what words you could cut. Uh, it's not a verb tense. They're both past tense. Uh, the comma before the and is fine. So this is a correctly used conjunction. Tell me more, Badria, tell me more about this. There should be a then in this sentence. There you go, Victoria nailed it. Okay, Victoria, it should say that Hector used the hammer to drive the nails. So there you go, you've, under, you've uncovered a meaning issue. So first of all, this conjunction um, is correct. That shouldn't say conjugations, this should say conjunctions. Um, this conjunction here is used correctly. We have a complete clause followed by a complete clause. So there's no error there. But in order to correct this, what we need to do is fix the meaning. So the author is intending to say that Hector used a hammer to drive nails. Right? That one is used for doing the other. That's the whole point of this sentence. In the original sentence, right, um, where up here where it says Hector drove the nails and he used a hammer, the, in, in the sentence as it actually is displayed, there is no connection between the use of the hammer and the driving of the nails. That, the entire point of that sentence to say that the hammer and the nails are connected and that one is used to do the other is totally absent. That is a meaning problem. There's nothing grammatically wrong here. There's no tense errors. There's no modifier errors, no conjunction, no fragment, no run on, no modifier problems. The sentence grammatically is correct, but it doesn't make sense. What you want to say is that Hector drove the nails using a hammer or what Victoria said, which is um, Hector used a hammer to drive the nails. In both of those examples, we're fixing this in the sense that we've corrected the meaning, um, that we're, a, we're, we're saying that the hammer was used to drive the nails. Okay, type in the chat window if this is confusing, um, or if you have a question about why um, the fixed one is fixed and the broken one is broken, because um, this is confusing. It is not a syntax thing. It is a logic thing. It is an understanding thing. Paris, your fix is good. He used a hammer to drive the nails. Um, Justin, your fix is good. Using a hammer, Hector drove the nails. Great. Yes, and OP, there are many, many more ways to correct this. 
Um, I only suggest this one example as, an, um, as one instance of a fix. Next, only nonsense is wrong, right? So on the SAT, I've seen this um, listed in many places that people will say that changing the meaning um, is illegal, uh, but that's, that is not the case. So there's, there's plenty of examples in the official guide where the meaning changes from the listed answer choice. In fact, we're gonna see a bunch of examples of this tonight where the meaning changes from the, from the original sentence to the correct answer. Um, so it is completely acceptable to change the meaning of the sentence. And uh, even with the change, it can still be correct. The only time a sentence is wrong for meaning purposes is if the sentence is nonsense. Right, so here's an example. This is a modifier error. Using screws to build the deck it stood up just fine against the wind. Right, this is a modifier error. How would you fix this modifier error? Anybody have a potential fix for it? Since I used screws to build the deck, it stood up fine against the wind. Badria, excellent sentence, right? And how, and how was that fixed? You'll notice that Badria put, a, put the word I in there, which is how we're going to fix it as well. That's a fine fix. Here's another fix. The carpenter used screws to build the deck, so it stood up just fine against the wind. Notice that in, in both, both of these, the ones in the, that are coming in the chat window um, and, and the one that we have up here on the slide, what you'll see is that we've added the word carpenter. This is totally legal. It's completely fine. It's 100% it's acceptable to add words that did not exist beforehand in order to fix another type of error. So I list this not as an example of a modifier error. I actually am listing this as an example of a, non, of a not a modifier error. So this is fine, what we're doing here. From meaning perspective, it's only wrong if it's nonsense. This is not nonsense, so this is totally fine. This is the correct answer here. The carpenter used screws to build the deck, so it stood up just fine against the wind. And there's plenty of other correct options in the chat window as well. I'm seeing some questions in the chat window about new SAT. Let's take all of that, save those questions, let's take all of those at the end um, so we can focus on meaning for right now. Um, okay, eliminate redundancies. This is another piece, important piece of what it means to have correct meaning. Here's a broken example. The stock price increased up to $396 per share. And I'm already seeing a bunch of suggestions for how do we, how we fix this and Many of you are correctly um, identifying that we have a redundancy here with the word increased and up to. So we need to get rid of one of those. Um, the stock price increased $396 per share would be one example of how we might fix this. Right, you can't increase up to uh, because that's redundant. Increase already conveys the idea that you're uh, raising something, so you don't need to say up to. However, here's an example of something that has a repetition but is not redundant. So for example, when Sheila came out of the store, Sheila noticed that her wallet was missing. This is repetitive, which you might disagree with stylistically. You might say, I don't like the way that sentence sounds because it repeats the word Sheila. But Sheila is not redundant here. Okay, very important to understand the difference. In the first case, when we say the price increased up to, it is impossible for you to increase up to. Right, these mean the same thing. So when you say them both, it becomes nonsense. Down here, when we say the word Sheila twice, 
the word Shelah has a different job. The first time we're saying who came out of the store, right? Sheila is the one who came out of the store. The second time we use this, the word Sheila, we're explaining who noticed that her wallet was missing. So Sheila came out of the store and Sheila noticed that her wallet was missing. It happens to be the same person, but that's not redundant. Sheila has two different roles. It's repeated, but it's okay. Rachel's saying, would it be wrong to change it to when Sheila came out of the store, she noticed that her wallet was missing. Rachel, that would not be wrong. That would also be correct. And what you're doing is what most people do, which is you're taking out one of the Sheilas and you're using a pronoun. And we covered pronouns in another day, but um, you know one of the reasons why we use pronouns is to make sentences sound better. But pronouns don't typically fix redundancy problems. They just make sentences sound better, but they're not more clear. And if you don't use a pronoun, if you repeat the noun, which is your other option, that's completely acceptable and it is not redundant. So Stacy, there is no amount of times where repetition becomes redundant. Right? The only time when you have something that's redundant is when you use two different words, so increased and up to, for example, to say exactly the same thing. So we're only saying one thing, so we only want one word. Okay. Um, and in this particular sentence, there are not two different Sheilas. It's okay even if there's only one Sheila. This is still not redundant, right? Even if it's, you know, Sheila Bennington the first came out of the store. Sheila Bennington the first noticed that her wallet was missing. They're different in the sense that. Um, the first time we say the name, we're talking about the person who came out of the store. The second time we say the name, we're talking about the person who missed the, noticed that her wallet was missing. And it's okay that it happens to be the same person. It's not redundant. Um, another way of looking at it is you're saying we're providing new information the second time. Right? The first time we learn that Sheila's coming out of the store. The second time we say Sheila, we learn that her wallet was missing. Oh, did I spell it differently? That's a, that's a mistake. Apologies. Correct that right here. Um, in the original, notice here, increased up to, we are not learning new information when we say up to. When we say the stock price increased, that's one way of saying it. When we say the stock price um, rose up to, that's another way of saying it. So that is why this is redundant. Sorry about that typo. Okay, next. Make sure you're tracking the subject and verb. So here's an example. Sparky the dog took off after a squirrel dropping the leash. How would you fix that? Yes, Tanya, you're right. The subject is wrong. Mariella, you're also right. The dog can't hold a leash. So who do you think the author is intending to say dropped the leash? Some person, right? So let's, let's fix this uh, by putting that in here. So Sparky the dog took off after a squirrel when Billy dropped the leash. Right, so in this particular type of error, um, what you're seeing here is that the the subject that the author's intending to assign to this verb, um, this is actually kind of a mod in the original, it's kind of a uh, modifier for some, for some subject which is not present. Um, the subject is literally not there. So we say, Sparky the dog took off after a squirrel dropping the leash. In the original sentence, um, the, the true subject or the noun that this modifier should be referring to doesn't exist, so Billy is not in the sentence. So that's a meaning problem. Because the author is just saying that the leash is dropped, but never says who's dropping it. In fact, it makes it sound like um, the leash was dropped by Sparky.
But that's not the author's intent. The author's intent is to say that Billy or, or some other person dropped the leash. It would be okay if the, if, the, if the author said, Sparky the dog took after this, off after the squirrel after the leash was dropped. That would leave it ambiguous. It would say, we don't know who dropped the leash. But when we just say, the dog took after a squirrel dropping the leash, that, that makes this a modifier for, um, in fact, let me delete this so that we're not confusing you there. That makes this a modifier for took off. That's modifying how the dog took off. The dog took off dropping the leash. But we really want to say that Billy dropped the leash. Okay, so make sure that you track the correct subject-verb relationship. All right, so before we do some practice questions, here are some um, process notes for you. How to go through these. One, read the full sentence and make sure Step two, you understand the author's intended meaning. So you really need to get a holistic understanding of the sentence. This is a very important note. It's something that is often skipped, especially by novice test takers who are struggling. Sometimes they just hunt for error types, and they forget that they actually need to read and understand completely what's going on. So make sure that you do that. And this is something that you should put in your process for all questions, not just for ones that you know to be meaning questions but I would always do this. So understand the author's intended meaning. And then lastly, check for known error types within meaning. So for example, you want to look for um, correct conjunctions, redundancy, and good old fashioned nonsense. Right, if it just doesn't make any sense at all, um, then, uh, then you've got yourself an error. Okay, so let's start it out. Uh, when you get the answer to these, um, type them in the chat window, but do not press enter. That's important. We don't want spoilers coming out. So type your answer into the chat window, but don't press enter. I'll let you know when you can send it, and we'll all look at these together. Okay, go ahead and send your answers. Okay. So, which ones of these, forgetting for a moment about which one is correct, which ones of these are incorrect because of a meaning problem. Okay, Rachel's saying A and B. Yeah, let's 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 list some of these. So A. Notice that A has um, comma and as its conjunction, and so does B. Is that the appropriate conjunction for what the author is trying to say? No, 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 it's not. So the author wants to say that Canada is thought of to be a northern neighbor, and then you want to you want to give a counterexample to that. You want to say Canada was thought to be a northern neighbor, but many of the states extend further north. You don't want to say it was thought to be a northern example and many of the states. Because that doesn't make any sense. Um, we call this a correct conjunction in the sense that, um, grammatically speaking, this, everything here is done correctly. The only way to know that this is incorrect is to parse out the meaning between um, what the author is saying before the conjunction and what the author is saying afterward. So those two things, the idea that Canada is a northern neighbor, only makes sense when compared to many of the states being further north than Canada. 
if it's joined with a conjunction that, contra that shows some kind of contradiction or some unexpected situation, that would be either the but or the however. However, it's not technically a conjunction here because we have a semicolon. Um, it was also pointed out that the whereas is also incorrect for the same reason as the and. Right, so A, B, and D, you can get rid of all of those. Even though these are correctly connected, um, you can still get rid of them, right? Because the meaning doesn't make sense. Now, how about C? Somebody actually already said C is the wrong tense. Yeah, this extending. This should be extend, right? That's the wrong verb tense. So C is out for verb tense, and that just leaves E. This is a great example of how you need to actually use a semicolon, um, which many people are often hesitant to do. But here it is in a correct answer. All right, here's another one. Okay, go ahead and send your answers in. Okay, looks like we've got a CE battle, which is good. That's what we should have. Uh, same question as before. What can we get rid of here because of a meaning problem? So what one, which answers would you now cross out for meaning reasons? Okay, I'm getting A, popular answers. Let's Look at that. Um, yeah, so A has had before. It is a, we've got the and conjunction. Uh, and we're trying, now again, read the whole sentence and make sure that you understand the author's intended meaning. The author's intended meaning is to say that the battle took place here. Many people assume that it took place there which is a different place. So again, we want to use a conjunction that allows it to set up that dichotomy, that it's this, not that, or this, but that. What you shouldn't have is this and that. It doesn't make sense to say it took place here and many people think it's there. That just, there's no, um, there's no sense to setting up the sentence that way. So that's how we can get rid of A. Um, some of you are saying B as well. B has a similar issue. It's not a conjunction. Um, it's actually a modifier. Many people assuming the Scottish Highlands, um, forgetting for the moment that it leaves out in a critical phrase that it, which is something along the lines of it took place in. Sorry, in case that wasn't clear, I said modifier. So many people assuming um, the Scottish Highlands, all of that is a modifier for Northern England. Um, um, uh, my point here is that don't, don't worry about the modifier for right now. Uh, the important thing that I'm trying to show here is that with B is that there's a meaning problem in B. B has a bunch of other errors too. The modifier is wrong. Um, it leaves out a bunch of important words. But even if we just look at it from a meaning standpoint, um, it has failed to include the idea that people um, thinking it was in the Scottish Highlands is a departure from the fact that it took place in Northern England. Right? There's no, there's no word that says but or not or although. Right? So that makes this one wrong from a meaning standpoint. The rest of these have a good 
um, conjunction-ish word, but, not, and not. So how do we get rid of the rest? Um, so D has the problem of not what many people assume the Scottish Highlands. Um, again, there's no verb in here. Um, it needs to say it was the Scottish Highlands. It just, this, D doesn't have that verb, so, so D is wrong. Um, now here's the big, the big debate, which was many of you answered C and many of you answered E. Uh, both of these have fine meaning, right? It sets up the dichotomy just fine. Um, the difference is um, in C, we say many people assume it to be the Scottish Highlands. So what is it? It is a pronoun. What is that standing in for? Suppose it's the battle. As you'll soon see, it doesn't actually matter what it's standing in for, even if you use the movie or the battle. Try placing that in, try subbing those words in uh, for it. Many people assume the battle to be the Scottish Highlands. That doesn't make sense. Or many people assume the movie to be the Scottish Highlands. So a movie and a battle, those are things that can't be the Scottish Highlands. They can be in the Scottish Highlands, which is what we have in E, which is why E is correct. Right, so think, nouns can't be the Scottish Highlands. All right, important things here for you were for you to eliminate a, mainly A for being wrong because it used um, an improper conjunction to be consistent with the meaning. That's the main takeaway here. The rest of that was gravy. If you got it, great. Here's another one. All right, go ahead and send your answers in. This is a very difficult question, by the way. I think this is a level five, which is the highest difficulty that they have. And I'm consequently getting many, many different errors, many different answer choices sent in. So, Badraya, tell us, is saying redundant, tell us what the redundancy is. or anybody who sees the redundancy, what is it? Annually and each year. All right, so this one is saying, we're annually distributing a million pounds of food each year. This one, this one got me also. When I first read this, I did not catch that. That's part of the why this, this particular sentence is a, is a level five. And part of the reason why if you are already really excelling and you have extra time left over, right? So this is a strategy I would only do if I were excelling at writing and I had extra time left over at the end. Something you might want to do is go back and manually check for redundancy on difficult questions. And that's how you can protect yourself from this type of error. Um, another thing that you can do um, that I do is I don't pick no error ever on these types of questions until I've manually checked for all other types. So for me, it's always a very slow process to pick no error. And I use that as a safety to make sure that I'm not missing something. Mariella, how long should you wait, um, what, before picking no error? Sometimes it usually takes me about two minutes to pick a no error, which is a really long time for these questions. 
right? You have a you have an allotment of about what did I say like forty five seconds for each one of these. Yeah, if you're on a time crunch, that's not something you can do. Uh, there's a question, which is, shouldn't there be a comma after the Cummington Soup Kitchen? And I think there should be a comma after that. Um, that is a, this is a noun modifier um, for volunteer organization. So that should be offset by commas, especially if it starts with one. Um, I'll check the... Uh, I'll check the answer guide in a minute to see if it had a comma in there. Even if it did not, um, the redundancy would overpower that. So it is not, it is not um, impossible for there to be commas missing on the test.